What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Twin Motion tutorial for you. So in today's video, this is probably a little bit more of a speed model or a speed render in the sense that I'm just going to take a model from SketchUp into Twin Motion and we're going to see about how far we can take it in about 10 minutes or so. So I'll kind of talk through the way that I'm looking at it, some things that we can change, things like that, and then we'll see if we can get a quick result out of this without having to make too many changes. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so this is a model from the 3D warehouse that you can download and follow along. So this model is the Transportation Terminal Rotterdam by Milo M. You can bring this in and this is a fairly lightweight model. Part of the reason for that is if you look at this, um, a lot of this has been a uh, kind of a uh, textured out using like using like uh, street elevation views and things like that so things like the glass haven't really been detailed out yet but we're gonna go ahead and see what we can do with this inside of twin motion so probably the first thing I'm gonna do is just looking at this this is a pretty cool train station um, but the problem is there's no train models or train track textures or anything like that inside of twin motion so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in here and I'm just gonna find all of these trains so these are all in here here. Most of them are component 15, I think. Uh, you can kind of find those in the outliner. And then there's a bunch of them that are just in here as groups as well. So we're just going to find those real quick. It looks like component 16 as well. But we're just going to take all of those and select them in the outliner. And I'm just going to put them in a group. And I'm just going to name it trains and I'm just gonna hide them. And I'm gonna see how many of these trains we can get in here. It looks like a bunch of them are just in here as kind of like generic group as well. So maybe we'll just do this this way. So we'll take a look at it from an elevation view and we'll just drag a right to left selection box over them real quick just to kind of select them and then just hide them. So. So once I've kind of hidden the trains, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to save it. So I'm going to do a file, save, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go over into Twin Motion and we're going to import it into um, our scene for rendering. So I'm just going to go to file. I guess you don't have to go to new scene because I already have a new scene. And uh, I'll leave the starting ground in for right now, but we're just going to import this file. And one thing about this file when we do this is we want to make sure that we click on the button for keep hierarchy. Um, we don't want to collapse by material. And uh, I'm just going to check the box here for fix UV and texture. Anyway, so what we have now is we have a nice view of our... Uh, we have a nice view in here of our, we're going to call it a bus station now, and we're going to start making some changes. So the first thing I'm going to change is I'm going to start swapping out some materials. And I'm going to get as many as I can, but generally speaking, you want to replace these low resolution textures from SketchUp with... Uh, with the uh, more high resolution or higher detailed stuff inside of Twin Motion. And in this case, I'm just going to go in here to the man made textures and we'll go ahead and maybe use like a cobblestone material or something like that. There's some weird UV mapping things going on with this one where it appears to be kind of distorted. And I'm not 100% sure why because I feel like that should be a, uh, I feel like that should be more of a square material. And so what I did is I just came in here and I changed my UV mapping. So something's weird about the UV mapping in here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, when we uh, select this material, we're just going to click this button and we're going to go up here and we're going to select cubic UV as opposed to the from object UV because the UVs in the model are all messed up. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and you can see how this has an image for Google Earth snapshot. We don't want that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put an asphalt material in here. You can see how that asphalt fault material comes in real nice with the cubic UV. So there may be some other things that we replace too, maybe like the this concrete or something like that um, on this face, just to make that look a little bit more realistic. So you could spend a lot of time doing that in here. I'm trying to go as fast as possible just for the sake of this video. So I'm just going to drag in a couple more things, maybe a like one of these fancy ceilings maybe or something like that. And we'll go ahead and call it good. And so probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my scene up so I don't really see this stuff in the background. So I, I'm only going to focus 
out here for right now. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I don't know what the material on these is, so we'll go ahead and replace these as well. So now that we've got this kind of quick setup done in here, what I want to do is I want to add some buses. What we're going to do for right now is we're just going to add some buses in here. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to add like a city bus, just like this. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to rotate this. We want to pay a special amount of attention to the number of degrees that we dictated for this one. When we first brought this bus in, um, you can see how 160 degrees kind of lines it up. So if I do this, so now I can just type in that same value over here when I mouse over that so I don't have to worry as much about um, getting the angle right and everything like that. And I'm going to speed up my camera speed just a little bit. And the nice thing is once you get these lined up, you can just kind of come in here and you can just kind of dictate where they go. You can also hold the shift key in order to create a copy. So I'm gonna click and drag in order to create a copy. So we've got a couple different buses in here. I might add a few more. And so that's probably gonna get us pretty close. So um, we could probably come in here and add a couple more buses and stuff like that. We'll kind of leave it as is for right now. So we've gone ahead and we've swapped out some materials. We've added some kind of context models. Um, what I might do just to really quickly add some people to this, I might go ahead and add like a character path in here. So that's the path where people are gonna come through here and they're gonna walk. So instead of me coming through here and randomly adding all of those people myself, I'm just gonna add a character path that's gonna run from there to there. And I'm gonna hit the escape key. And that's gonna go ahead and that's gonna add people in kind of walking across this scene. So when this adds in people walking across this scene, What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to kind of randomly add those people so I don't have to go in and figure out exactly where they're gonna go or something like that. And you can take that character path and uh, adjust the density, so the number of people in here. So you could change it so there's a whole bunch of people. You could change this down to something like 5% and there's gonna be a lot less. And then I'm just gonna kind of let that work itself out. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set up a view for rendering. So in order to do that, we're just gonna go down here and we're gonna click on the uh, media button and we're going to click on image and I'm going to click create image. So that's going to create an image that I can then come in here and kind of work with and adjust. And so I'm going to set my time of day so I get kind of an interesting shadow coming across this scene. And then I'm just going to adjust a couple other things. And again, you could spend a lot more time on this. Um, like I said, the point of this video is to see if I can create a quick rendering. So maybe we'll adjust our We'll go ahead and we'll adjust our field of view just a little bit so that we get kind of this bus right here in our scene right here, but then we also get a view kind of of the bus station and we could adjust this up if we wanted to. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn my perspective correction on. I don't wanna to do too much with the weather because it's gonna block my uh, sunlight. So I'm gonna leave that alone. And then in your lighting, you can come in here and you can adjust some different things for like your GI. If you want uh, the sunlight to kind of bounce a little bit more, you can adjust the ambient lighting up and down a little bit. You can also adjust the sunlight up and down and that's gonna change the way the shadow looks as well as the overall brightness of your scene. So just come in here and kind of play around with this. Um, if you turn your ambient occlusion up, you're gonna get more shadows in like the little crevices and things like that. And then uh, depending on if you want this to be more of a yellow or more of a like blue whitish feel, you can adjust your white balance inside your scene. At the moment, I'm not gonna do too much with depth of field. Um, I might, it's probably not gonna be that big of a deal for this one. I might bring in like a reflection probe kind of by my bus. Just so I get a little bit of reflection off of the glass in the bus. Just be aware that the bigger that reflection probe is gonna be, the longer this is gonna to take to render. But you can see how this is kind of uh, showing you a preview of a little bit more light bouncing off of this. 
So, and then I'm just gonna to get back to my camera view. I'm just gonna click on my image right there. We'll go ahead and refresh this view so it has this camera view right here. And then once this kind of gives you a view that works for you, you can just go down here to export image. We're gonna check the box for image and we're just gonna click start export. And so you're gonna find your folder that you wanna export that image to, click select folder and let it render out. So you can see how there's definitely some more changes that we'd wanna make. Um, we'd wanna get a little more detailed with this, also adjust our lighting a little bit more. But for just taking this model, exporting it straight out of SketchUp and bringing this in, this actually gives us a pretty good result. But overall, I mean, especially if you're using this for like quick architectural visualizations and things like that, I'm pretty happy with the quality of this render. Obviously it's not 100% photorealistic or anything like that, but the fact that I was able to do this in just over 10 minutes um, is really one of the powers of real-time rendering. That's where I'm going to end this video. I know somebody's going to come back and tell me that this isn't very photorealistic. I understand the point is more demonstrating how quickly you can generate a rendering, how beneficial that could be for like architects or people that do quick visualizations and make a bunch of changes, things like that. So anyway, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.